think I need the wire brush too badly. Folks, I'm going to put this Denzel paste on all the metallic surface. What this paste does, this is really the primer, this really does the bulk of the corrosion protection. It's a penetrant and once it hits the metal it pacifies if there has to be any flash rusting or anything of that nature on it. Uh, it'll go on to that metal and basically neutralize any corrosion. So this really does the corrosion inhibiting. I pay specific attention to the nuts and bolts because nine times out of ten that's where you get the failures. So I'm just going to put this, you can apply this by hand, by brush. It doesn't have to be any fancy uh, application. It's not the Mona Lisa we're painting. Okay. <laughs> So like I say, you can use like a stiff bristle brush, a glove hand. This is all non-toxic stuff. Uh, it's inert. There's no VLCs or anything like that. No solvents in it. So you have no confined space issues. film of this everywhere and that really is the corrosion inhibitor. What I'm going to show you next is a couple of profiling materials and they're basically designed to fill voids and cavities especially around these nuts and bolts uh, so that you have a smooth area to not can fall on the tape and basically push it away. You've actually got uh, some support right around the nuts and bolts. So this is a product called Profiling Mastic basically a mastic filler. It's again comprised of that petrolatum material. It has little closed cellular polymer or styrofoam in it, which actually puts some air around it to make it a pliable product, especially in colder temperatures. And it's just basically pushed in and formed around those nuts and bolts just to give you a smooth area to overwrap. And like I say, nothing fancy. You're just taking off those sharp edges and pushing it in. It's kind of like foam for the kids. Oh, it's doing it. It's doing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Is it coming down to the manhole? No. Yeah. Just find it's easier to cut into strips because you can just break them off and kind of shove them in. There's not much else you have to smooth off here. <laughs> You've actually added some extra protection to the nuts and bolts. And you can fill these little voids if you so choose. Just pack that in there. Like I say, it's nothing fancy. That's about as fancy as it has to look. I want to throw a little bit of mastic in 
we're going to go over top of this piece. Just take the sharp edges off, fill those voids. The tape's going to do the rest of the covering. Okay, pretty straightforward, folks, so far. About it, there's a little bit left over. So now, if you're doing some, say you were doing some bigger diameter, say this was, say, 12 inch and up flange joints. To profile, you can use this mastic material, this mastic blanket, which has a fabric side. It has a mastic side, which is down. And this would be wrapped around those flanges, for example, much like a diaper. It's brought around and then it's kneaded around the nut and bolt just to smooth off. It's really typically used as a time saver for those bigger diameters. The small diameter stuff like this, I find the profiling mask is just easy to break it off, cut it off, and pack it in. So you're suggesting 12 inch and up, perhaps, using this mask? You can use that, uh, that mastic blanket as a profiling material as opposed to the profile mask, if that's correct. And that's strictly as a time saver. Okay, the can tape you do itself. This in the rain? Pardon? Can you do this in the rain? Uh, we're about to find out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you can do this in the rain. These tapes are actually wrapped under water. This stuff can sit in water, totally unaffected. We manufacture the petrolatum tape, and incidentally, this is the 80th year for Denzel tape. We make it from 2 inches wide right up to 12 inches in width. This is a 6 inch roll, partial roll that I have here, so I'm just going to start with this. And typically, when you take it, <clears throat> start down on the pipe 4 to 6 inches and just come around it. It's a pretty forgiving tape because you can just wrap it around. If you get a crease in it or a fold, don't worry about it. It's sticky and it's meant to be so that it sticks and seals to itself. And you basically just force that air down, lapping the seams. You'll see how well it'll seal to itself. If you miss a spot, like I say, you just cut and paste. It really becomes almost like a glorified paper mache. Another six inch roller. This will work. Not that bad. So don't be afraid to cut and paste this. I just come around. That area. Cut the piece off and just smooth it down. I see a little wee spot that I may have missed. It's not a big deal. Are you gonna are you wrapping the whole valve there? I will. Okay. One on on uh, <coughs> on the uh, jobs that we've uh, been looking at. Yes. We expect uh, uh, epoxy coated fittings, valves, stuff like that. Right. So we uh, we suggested that uh, all that needs to be protected is the part that's uh, you know at at greatest risk. That area that's not epoxy coated or otherwise protected, being the bolts and the and the gland, restraining gland and stuff like that. If um, if what what would you suggest if the uh, valve or whatever got got scratched and exposed. That, that's that's really the, the the essence of it, Herman. Um, that's why we tend to wrap the valves because once they're installed and through nobody's fault, that epoxy is going to get a nick off it, and you're actually going to have a corrosion cell there where the corrosion will just target that yeah, area. It's going to concentrate. It it's sure. going to concentrate right to that area. <clears throat> For the extra little bit of tape that you use. We just basically encase the whole thing. That way it's entirely sealed. There's nothing getting at it. It's part of the job. It doesn't act an exorbitant amount just to wrap this little part of the body. By the time you do the bolts, the bonnet, your connections, you have a minimal area that, that would be left to wrap anyway. Uh, the other kind of this lower is uh, this 
say, well, we're going to use stainless steel bolts. What they don't realize is, though, a lot of times you're putting that stainless steel into dissimilar metals, and they're actually creating a bigger problem in doing that. Yeah, we've not gone that route. That's, I've, I've seen research about that, that stainless steel is not your answer. Right. Pretty forgiving. Anybody who's ever wrapped a hockey stick, a broom, whatever, you can put this on. I've only done this once or twice myself. <laughs> now, if you miss a really small spot, does that make the whole thing useless, or? Well, that's kind of the reason why you put the, uh, the paste down first, because it is your corrosion area, or your corrosion inhibitor. Um, and for the most part, you're not gonna you'll see any areas. <laughs> like, I don't think there's too many areas that I would've missed there. Because you're giving yourself at least an inch or two of overlap, uh, you're ensuring that it's sealed to itself and covering that metal surface. And you don't have to use a lot of tape to do it. We wrap right up to the operating nut. I just put a thin film of paste on that nut just as some additional corrosion protection. For example, you can lift this up, move it around, stick it down, flatten out any seam. Basically all you're doing is making sure the air is out of it. You've got a nice smooth surface. You can feel pretty much by hand that you've got those areas covered. Like I say, if there is a little area that you missed, just cut a piece off, stick it on. It's cut and paste, paper mache, whatever you want to call it. Stick it in there, smooth it down, you're done. Now we're going to continue on here. I'll just wrap up this uh, this we side. We should have done an elapsed time here. Oh, I'm sure somebody's time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just going to seal this up with the PVC because, like I say, we usually come down four to six inches on the other side. You can see how well that just seats down to itself, even with the wrinkles. It's smoothed out. Some folks will even take, say they're wearing gloves or whatnot, they'll sometimes, just to go over the material, if they're hand sticking to it, just take a bit of that paste to rub over it. It's not mandatory. It just sometimes allows the glove pen to slide over to seal those seams up a little easier. That's all it is. For example, if you had an area that you had very limited space, you can actually take the tape, and we, like I said, we make this from two inches right up to 12 inches wide. Um, you can take a wider tape, cut a section off, say on a piece of plywood or a piece of cardboard, and you have very minimal area to get around. You can actually slide that tape on the piece of cardboard underneath it, lift it off and go around in that fashion. So you have that option for really confined, tight spaces. Does it hurt when the stone the I'm sorry, does it? Well, if you're back to another hole, the stone's falling all around there. No, it's a, it's a pretty tough material. Um, it's a synthetic fabric that doesn't degrade through time. So here's a spot that I just want to cover over. Um, it's pretty tough stuff. You can throw the roll up to her, Sean, just to show so you can see what it's like. I equate it with Buckley's mixture. It's sticky, but it works. Yeah, how's the face, Blair? Well, <laughs> just like if you had to eat it, you could. <laughs> That's a trick question. It won't kill you, put it, put it that way. It's made from a food grade oil. Kind of like the Colonel's 11 herbs and spices, they don't yeah. see. Looks pretty good, the way. Smooth out. And all you're doing is just running your hand over, lapping those seams. That's really all you're doing.
There's an area where you got minimum space, so I'm just going to cut it off and put it around. It's pretty sticky. Anybody feel they couldn't do this? After seeing it? <laughs> How many hands went up? I'm not looking. You want to. Oh, I thought you said, did you want to do it? <laughs> You do this once, it's done. We have stuff in the ground now, 75, 80 years. They've come back, slipped the tape open, read the serial number on the belt, put the tape back together, and walk away. That's really it. Just to make it, make it pretty. It's just a different batch of the, effectively the same stuff. So you, you got to come back and do any service work 20 years down the road. Set this tape off around the bonnet. You're going to actually expose brand new nuts and bolts. You can take apart, pull it apart, do your internal work. Put it back together, you've probably exposed this area. Go around a couple of times with the tape again to seal it all up. You never know if it's open. End of story. It's made to stand alone. There's nothing else you need to do. It replaces anything sacrificial, such as uh, sack nuts or anodes, anything like that, which work, but they do have a life. This has an indefinite life.